What? I only saved four times? Jesus. Scenario sec- oh wait, what? That's so we- No, I- Oh, the current disc is disc 2. That's so- it, that is kind of cool that it remembers the last disc you had in. Usually when you load it up by default, it just goes to disc 1, which can be weird. Again, I was pretty confused the first time I got this on the PlayStation Network here because, like, how how do you switch disc? You have to go to reset game and reset which whichever disc you want to put in. So I was like, no, I want to play as Claire. I'm sure there might be some people out there who didn't look anything up and who played Resident Evil 2 for the first time ever on this release, like I did, and didn't know, so when they loaded up the game for the first time, they thought, oh, you just play as Leon, right? You don't have a choice about who you play as at the beginning of the game. Scenario second. In the midst of the T-Virus outbreak in Raccoon City, Claire Redfield succeeded in escaping from the city, along with one of the only other survivors, a young girl named Sherry. However, behind their escape was the lone survivor of the Raccoon City Police Department. Leon S. Kennedy. So we've already seen most of this FMV, but instead, now we're seeing it from Leon's perspective. Isn't that funny? They made, like, these must be expensive to make, especially at the time. They made two separate FMVs depending on which character you pick. I can't imagine how much that would have cost to do back in 1998. What have we got here? Actually, you know what? That's not what they did. They probably just made one big FMV and then just chopped up which scenes got included on which disc. That makes way more sense. They would not do the same FMV. Like, this is... A repeat. Why bite me? Yeah, they didn't do the same thing. They made one big FMV and then cut out the parts that had Claire in it on disc one. Disc one only has Leon's parts on it. Man, no! Mess. I don't know. I, done this. I don't know how to turn those off. What could have done this? What was that? That didn't take long. What are these things? That's far enough. Leon's voice sounds so weird. No! Jeez, Leon, you're literally not even... You're literally not even a sworn officer yet. Like, you just drove into town, and here you are plugging citizens. Wait! Don't shoot! Get down. Like, geez, your first day on the job is gonna be spent filing paperwork for unjustified use of lethal force. <laughs> How did he- You know what? I just realized this. He drove into town on a jeep. How did he have the keys to a random police car that they just found? I never thought about that before. I arrived in town, and the whole place went Great. insane. The radio's out. You're a cop, right? Yeah, first day on the job. Great, huh? Name's Leon Kennedy. Nice to meet you. Mine's Claire. Claire Redfield. I came to find my brother, Chris. It's so weird going back to Leon in this game after Resident Evil 4, and even after Resident Evil 6. Although Resident Evil 6 kind of fucked things up. Could you open the glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. <laughs> Better take it with you. That delivery still cracks me up. Like, it's so weird going from, like, gum-chewing, uh, 
action hero, your right hand comes off, Mr. Scott Kennedy. So actually, what's interesting, I actually looked this up, if you have Leon A, disc 1 in, this FMV is different. Because the police car will flip around, so they crash into it rear end first. Which makes sense, because that way you justify Leon being on that side of the car when the truck blows up. Because whichever one you pick, side A or side B, decides which side of the big wreck they're on, which means that the route they take to get to the Raccoon City Police Department is different. Like, Claire had to go the long way around. She had to go through a gun store and, like, a vault, like a basketball court and, like, an eatery and a bus. Like, she had to go the long way around. You have to survive this night. To know the true end! Whereas Leon actually has a much shorter... <gasps> Delicatessen! Delica... Delicate... Okay, I thought it said Delica Delicatessen. Yay! Banash! Banash, Nick! Banash! Anyway, oh, fuck. I have literally trapped myself. Like some manner of fool. Look at this foolish deed I have accomplished. Look at these zombie police officers. Not wearing the uniform that I am wearing, by the way. And, oh, what a long, arduous journey. But don't worry, we're finally here. We finally made it. We're in front of the Raccoon City Police Department. Like, do you see how ridiculous that is? Like, the character that has side B, literally the, co the police car was a left turn away from the from the station. They were literally a left turn away from getting to where they wanted to go the whole time. Claire got fucked over by being on that side of the police car. You can also n already notice that Leon has way more health than Claire because we've been nibbled on three times and we're still fine. And you can tell we're fine because we're not limping. So yeah, Leon got to the police station way before Claire did, but don't worry. That will not stop them from having a lot of bizarre continuity inconsistencies between who did what. I'm assuming that sound effect was them breaking through the front gate that we just went through. So now the courtyard out there is just packed to the gills with zambies. So, Leon's gun, and I... I'm still not sure... They both have German guns. I'm still not sure if this is the gun he uses in Resident Evil 6. Because if so, that would be actually really cool. Because that's a really uniquely shaped gun, isn't it? They're both 9mm, but... Like, it has that curved barrel at the tip. It just looks really distinct. And it's not what he uses in RE4. Like, in RE4, he was, like, basically a fucking super soldier running around, like, single-handedly genociding an entire Spanish countryside. We're never coming back here, so I'm just gonna not waste my bullets on these homeboys. Not that it matters, because Leon fucking lack of quick turn is really gonna fuck me over. So if you remember, up on this roof here, there was a crashed burning helicopter when we got there as Claire, and it was completely unexplained. But now we're here as Leon. How are you not hitting them? <laughs> Everyone involved, this was the most preventable thing that could have ever occurred. This was the most preventable tragedy that could ever have transpired in the history of the world. Everyone involved in this crash was an incompetent buffoon, and I have no sympathy for any of you. What the fuck is the matter with you people? 
Continuing in Resident Evil's long tradition of the helicopter must crash, though. So it's so weird to go from, like, Leon, the super soldier, roundhouse kicking his way through an entire Spanish countryside. And being like, hasta luego. And then, to Resident Evil... Excuse me. Excuse me? Thank you. And then to Resident Evil 6, which was what I consider the our Resident Evil 5 era of Resident Evil, where they were taking themselves way too seriously. And he was like, Ugh, gotta shoot him in the head. Ugh, what's happening? Ugh. That's basically an exact paraphrase of what Leon was characterized as in that game. God, that game was so bad. I've been watching a little bit of my old LP of Resident Evil 6 just to get a little bit of a refresher on what a piece of trash that game is. There we go. Please give me a fucking item box so I can ditch this worthless ass knife. The most- I, th I think the Resident Evil 2 knife is, by far, the worst knife in the entire franchise. I don't know if anyone's actually done the math on it, but I would be willing to bet. Because the Resident Evil 2 knife is fucking garbage. Uh, uh, and then, like, like, say what you want about Resident Evil 6, but the Leon of Resident Evil 6, Lickers, was a veteran of the fight against B.O.W.s for a good ten years, at minimum. So, he knew his way around. Which made, which is why certain things that happened in Resident Evil 6 were so fucking stupid. We've already read all these. A lot of these are repeats. I think there might be a couple of character-specific files, but most of them are just the exact same. And again, Leon has the same problem that Chris did, where he doesn't have a lockpick because he does not have a vagina. And if you, you only get a lockpick in Resident Evil if you have a vagina. That's just the way it works. Our, our disgusting, fat man hands are not dexterous enough to pick a lock. <laughs> so then, reel that back all the way back to the beginning. Where Leon is a fresh-faced rookie cop on his first day on the job. He's probably fresh out of the academy. Again, imagine like Judy Hopps' background. Imagine the first, like, Judy Hopps gets off that train and walks around Zootopia, and the first thing that happens is motherfucker starts trying to nibble on her. Which wouldn't, like, that wouldn't even necessitate zombies for that to happen in Zootopia. But you see what I mean. Like, he gets out of his jeep into town. Which, again, massive plot hole. How did they both get into town? There's supposed to be a military quarantine around the city. But I guess that was technically a retcon. I wonder if they'll address that in the Resident Evil 2 remake, because that is such a huge plot hole caused by a retcon, is there's supposed to be a big military block off around the city. Oh shit. So it makes no sense that they got through and just drove into the city in their jeep and motorcycle. Yeah, they're probably definitely going to change it in the remake to give all of the other cops the Leon's uniform because that is such a big inconsistency. Like, imagine she got off that train and the first thing that happened was motherfucking zombies started happening. That's basically Leon's backstory. I mean, again, he's not even a sworn officer. He didn't sign in. Like, he was showing up to the city for his first day of work. Nice job just leaving this shotgun. So Claire has not arrived at the station yet. I think that we can be reasonably sure of that. Claire has not arrived at the station yet. So Leon took that shotgun off of the front desk. Because fuck you, Claire. You don't get a shotgun. That's funny. And again, Continuity inconsistency number one, apparently Leon already slapped that unicorn medal in there and got the spade key. But each character both still has to go around the entire precinct using all the keys to unlock all the doors. 
I believe we don't actually meet Marvin. Yeah. So that's also an inconsistency because Marvin apparently already locked the door, but we haven't met him yet. So Leon has to start off his search on the second floor. If I get frustrated enough, I might just turn on that infinite ammo cheat, by the way. Like, it's so funny to set the clock back where you're used to a character being all super capable and badass and take charge and know what they're doing and then rerun the clock and this is what they were like on their first day. This is day zero on Leon's experience in dealing with the living dead and bioweaponry. Like, he just drove into town, and all this shit was popping off around him. Forget. Like, none of the doors require the small key. Only, like, drawers and whatnot. So let's go ahead and use some of this already on these liquors. There we go. Only takes two each. So we're not going to have to resort to the infinite ammo cheat quite yet, but I likely will <laughs> at some point. I believe the way is we got to go downstairs. So I actually feel like that's something that they can expand upon in Remake 2. Because the original remake took the opportunity of we're remaking the first game after having made all of these games afterwards to retcon information that we invented later on in the series and retroactively apply it into the original game to fix certain inconsistencies. Like, they reinserted references to William Birkin and the G-Virus in to remake. They reinserted references to the Nemesis in to remake. And, uh, like, the Ashfords in, in Code Veronica got referenced in Remake. So I can easily see them doing stuff like that for Remake 2. Where they can take stuff that happened in Resident Evil 4 and 5 and 6 and reference it in files that you might find in, like, Umbrella's Laboratory in this game, in, 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 the, in the remake of this game. I can easily see that happening, especially since this is actually a really frustrating piece of information, but if you remember uh, the Umbrella Lab that we ran around at the end of Claire's game there. Come on. Come on, Skip. There you go. Uh, you actually... It's 2263? Two, two, no, 2236. Two, Again, Leon opens this safe, but apparently Claire has to also come back and open this safe herself at a later point. They both have to open the safe. It makes no sense. There's a lot of weird inconsistencies like that. I mean, like, say what you want about the first game, where you... Own, or the character you didn't pick gets, like, captured off-screen and thrown into the dungeon or whatever. Ah. That's frustrating. I think a later game, I think it was Code Veronica, added the option to where if you have a full inventory and you're going to pick up an herb, it gives you the option of, do you want to just use this herb off of the ground right now? Which was a really nice option. I believe they put that into future games. There we go. I'm not trying to use these bullets up, but there's no harm in it. And also, something I always liked about Remake, the original Remake, was instead of going around finding loose boxes of handgun bullets, you actually find clips. They called them clips. They're not. They're magazines. But in every other game, you just go around finding boxes of bullets. I wonder if they're going to change that. I wonder if they're going to change it to where you're finding magazines instead of just loose bullets that you apparently have to manually load yourself. 
<laughs> yep, that'll happen. Oh, that's a f that's an oh shit moment right there. That is an oh shit moment right there. Oh shit. Get away from me. Nope. Not not having fun time with this. Oh my god. There is a broken off hand. Oh my god. All of these cool little Like they didn't have to do that. That's so cool. You know what? Let's go ahead and use one more slug here. Let's get nice and close to make it count. Yeah! Double headshot, motherfuckers! <laughs> awesome! Thank god, that guy is shambling pretty quickly. Yeah, they might change it to be clips, but I think they might just keep it as regular handgun bullets also. Uh, that lab that we were running around at the end of the game there, you actually visit that lab in another game. In Resident Evil Zero, you go to that lab, and you can explore a couple of touched-up HD-ified rooms of that lab, interestingly enough. Uh, it's really disappointing. It's actually one of the worst things about Resident Evil Zero, is how fucked up that moment is. Because, like, it's so weird to explain, like, to just try and explain to you. Where the fuck do I use this key? Because I can't get in anywhere. It's so weird to try and explain to you why going to Birkin's lab in... Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, okay. In Resident Evil Zero was such a frustrating moment. Like, you'd have to... You, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to experience it for yourself. It was so aggravating and asinine. But they already did a little bit of revisit an area from Resident Evil 2. Okay, I can do this. There was no reason to come in here. I took that... Okay, whew, at least it wasn't for nothing. Yeah, I got a box of bullets. It can't have been for nothing, Joel. But actually, like... <laughs> There are some retcons that future games do that make the older games worse. There's some retcons that improve things, but there's some things that where it's like, why? Like, that? do you not realize how stupid that makes something that happened previously in the series? For example, in Resident Evil Zero, when you go to Birkin's lab, and again, like, I actually do not have the time in the day to explain to you how fucking stupid it was to, that you could go back to Resident Evil 2's lab in Resident Evil Zero. Like, the logistics of it alone are utterly mind-blowingly retarded. But what they did is when going to the lab in Resident Evil Zero... Like, you remember what the lab looked like when we went to ask Claire, right? Like, it was all overgrown and shitty and filled with moths somehow. And there was a giant plant growing and it was all gross and dilapidated. Which doesn't even make sense in this game, to be honest. Because, like, the zombie uh, outbreak in Raccoon City has only been popping off for, like, a little while. Like, I don't think, I don't know if we ever have, like, a clear, concise time frame, but I think it's at least a week. So you're telling me, like, best case scenario, let's say that shit started going down in the lab before it even touched the city, right? Because that makes sense, because Hunk's team, the Umbrella team that stole the shit from Birkin, popped in there, stole his shit, and then got wrecked by G, right? So, let's say 
at that moment, like before the T virus got eaten by those rats and started perpetuating around the city, that is when stuff started going wrong in that lab. That still seems like way too short a time frame for the lab to be in the condition we saw it in in Resident Evil 2 during the outbreak like this. But you still like, okay, it's a zombie apocalypse, the T-virus is all fucked up and shit. Okay, you can suspend your disbelief. Like, evil virus laboratory is gonna be fucked up in the event of a zombie apocalypse. Okay. But then you go to that lab in Resident Evil 2. Fuck. Uh, shit. I need those shotgun shells. Uh, this is really irresponsible. I shouldn't have done that, but it's fine. Thank you. Man, again, I, like, fuck. Why can't I just drop an item? Right? Another reason, fuck Resident Evil Zero, by the way. The T... O something. Dun, dun, dun. It's Determinator. This game is inspired by a lot of, uh... John Carpenter 80s movies. Such as... Not John Carpenter. Who's the guy who did Aliens? And now we can't go back out that way. Fun times. Guess it's a good thing we couldn't drop items. Dun, dun, dun! It's... Fuck. It's Tyrant! Ow, fuck. By a lot of movies by that guy. The guy who did... Terminator, the guy who did Aliens, because the relationship between Sherry and Claire is the relationship between Newt and Ripley in Aliens, and bam. And this guy, homeboy here, is uh, Mr. X, and he is heavily inspired by the Terminator, because what Mr. X here is... Let me finish talking about Resident Evil Zero first. So you go to Birkin's lab in Resident Evil Zero, and it is already all gross and disgusting and fucked up. Because they went, okay, it's a secret lab in Resident Evil, let's make it all gross and disgusting and fucked up, and it looks like it's been abandoned and overrun by zombies for a long time already. Even though that doesn't make sense, because Resident Evil Zero takes place before the outbreak in Raccoon City. So... Umbrella scientists were running around that lab doing their work. William Birkin was still alive working on the G-Virus in that lab when it was all fucked up and gross looking. Are you stupid? That doesn't make sense, Capcom. Anyway, so Mr. X here is a, uh, what would you call it? Like a factory, like a production model tyrant. Remember the tyrant in Remake? The, the guy who gored... Oh, wait, that never happened in our game. Like, the, the final boss of Resident Evil 1, who Wesker was like, It's magnificent! And who gored him through. A, like, that was... No, the, there was a prototype, that was the final model, and then these are the production line mass-produced versions of the Tyrant. If you saw, that helicopter actually had a bunch of different canisters. Yep. Well, I have to come back to this room later, so I'm gonna go ahead and kill this guy now. Fuck you. Fuck you too. Eat shit. Unfortunate, but necessary. Yeah, that's what I was expecting to happen earlier. I knew that happened at some point. If you saw, that helicopter had a bunch of canisters apparently filled with Mr. X's in them hanging from it. So, I think what we're supposed to expect, like, the, the explanation for it that we get told is Umbrella is dropping Mr. X's into... 
uh, the police department to tell it to go kill police officers. Because they're going, okay, Chief Irons was our guy on the inside. He has insider information. So the cops know shit that they shouldn't know. Because Umbrella, again, remember, the outbreak was an accident. Umbrella didn't cause the outbreak. And that's one of the things I think is actually pretty cool about early Resident Evil games like this. Is there's not really a central antagonist. There are villains. There are minor villains, like Wesker in Resident Evil 1 was a minor villain. And Birkin in this is a villain, but he's not, like, he got betrayed by Umbrella trying to steal his shit. And the only reason the outbreak happened was because he injected himself with the G-Virus out of desperation. And the Umbrella Corporation, they didn't want to cause the outbreak. Raccoon City is their is their their city. Like they own that shit. So it's probably like a big blow to them that they lost Raccoon City the way they did. So they're like I think you can assume that to a degree, like the shareholders of Ra of Umbrella are going, okay, we can salvage this. Right? No one at this point is aware that Raccoon City is a lost cause. Like, they're probably going, okay, we can salvage this. We can, like, deal with this situation. So, here's what we want to do. Like, we can clean this up eventually. In the meantime, make sure no one knows that this is our fault. Like, send in some motherfucking strike force. Like, hey, we got those new tyrant guys, program them with, yo, the cops, they are your mission. Bust in there and murder all of the cops. Because the cops probably know or are in a position to figure out that we are responsible for what happened. And we do not want that shit going public. So drop in this factory model tyrant and have him start murking cops. So that is why Mr. X immediately starts targeting Leon. Because Mr. X gets dropped in, the first person he sees is Leon Scott Kennedy running around in a police uniform. So Mr. X is going, that's a cop, gotta kill him, that's my mission. I guess Claire has arrived by now, because that liquor isn't here anymore. Although, again, the timeline is incredibly inconsistent. Like, it literally doesn't make any sense. Like, that's one upside to Resident Evil 1 having just the character you didn't pick got thrown in jail. So you do not have this issue of trying to work out, like the continuity of who got which key, and which character explored which room and solved which puzzle. Because honestly, it's just a mess. And again, something I'm curious about how they're going to handle. Oh, that's just a first aid spray. I'm not gonna do that. Because using a first aid spray brings down your ranking, so that's the worst thing you can do in a, res in a classic Resident Evil game is using a first aid spray. So, had no re- like, that key had no purpose. <laughs> there was no reason for that key to even exist. Uh, and, because- oh, damn. Because Leon is a male Resident Evil character, he starts out the game with the prerequisite male character item- item, the lighter. He does not have to go find the lighter. He starts out with the lighter, so we can get this red jewel right now if we want to. Which we actually have no reason to. Actually, yeah, we do. We can go... I don't know what... That seems like it's in a different spot than it was. Let's scrounge for ammo a little bit. 